first question, exports to Brazil um, and Brazilian exports to the United States. What, what, number one, what is the Brazilian government doing to help strengthen exports to the United States? And number two, particularly small and medium-sized U.S. businesses complain about the difficulty of entering the Brazilian market. Can you talk about trade both ways and particularly for small business? Uh, I don't think it's that difficult because at least $63 billion dollars we wouldn't have the, this huge amount of uh, bilateral trade. It was that difficult. Uh, we are doing a number, we are taking a number of different uh, measures. We are now in the process of authorizing uh, exports, mail exports and UPS and Federal Express exports. It's not easy. We have to have both uh, custom systems compatible and it's not. Our fiscal uh, system is different from the United States. Everything needs and demands a lot of work to make uh, both systems uh, work together. But we're doing a lot of things, especially um, in trade facilitation and expediting and cutting a lot of uh, bureaucracy from trade in both directions. And Brazilian exporters have a lot of complaints about exports to the United States too, besides the exchange rate, which is it's the cause that is making U.S. exports so popular in Brazil and so many. That's why we are having, we are running this deficit of uh, 12 billion dollars uh, this year. But well, we have a lot of different uh, initiatives. Uh, the embassy and the consulates we receive and we organize a number of trade missions. We have a number of visitors from different areas. From uh, I had the other day a large mission of Turismo um, Medico, how would you say that? Uh, Medic tourism uh, to attract uh, people to go to Brazil to treat themselves because I, I didn't know that, but it's much. Uh, it's less expensive in Brazil, and many other countries have the same system. So uh, we are working on a number of different uh, mechanisms and alternatives, but it takes a long time and especially a lot of patience. Let me ask you about oil and energy policy. As, as Brazil becomes a major oil producer, and by I think the estimate is 2015 you'll be a major exporter as well. Um, what happens to ethanol policy? Does it become, ethanol become less important? No. We're exporting now, and 20% of our exports to the United States is crude oil, which is amazing. I was mentioning this during our lunch. And, but ethanol is, uh, won't be uh, put aside. Uh, we want, uh, uh, we, we do not want and we will not forget ethanol. Ethanol is very important. It has a lot of implications. In Brazil, we mix 20% of uh, gasoline. We mix with ethanol. And this helps keep the, the environment and the planet. And we are working with the United States on aviation ethanol, which is very, very important, especially from the 1st of January next year on, when the European uh, carbon trading, uh, European trade emission system will be in force, and all flights from all countries in the world getting to Europe will, will have to pay an extra tax, which will make uh, airfare much higher. And of course, a solution, putting a, a high tax is not the solution to it. The solution is to having all airplanes flying on ethanol, which sure. is absolutely possible. And the U.S. Navy operates a huge number of fighters of Hornets and Super Hornets uh, totally on ethanol. And we are working together with a, a number of companies here in California on this. So I think this is the future. And this uh, in an um, environmental-minded planet will be very important too minded state, there are people who are very concerned about the rainforest in Brazil. No, no need to worry. <laughs> okay. No need to worry. It's uh, our, our uh, ethanol is made out of sugar cane. It's uh, at least, we have only 1% of our farming land is occupied by ethanol, and it's 
maybe uh, 3,000 kilometers, that in miles would be what, 5,000 miles from the Amazon forest. No one tree of uh, sugarcane would uh, grow in the Amazon. So this is... <laughs> okay. Good. Don't worry. <laughs> you, you mentioned health earlier and health tourism. And yeah. uh, Americans or others going to Brazil to have presumably elective <laughs> surgery done. Um, what can the U.S. and Brazil do uh, co cooperation in terms of global health? Or Brazil, not just with the U.S., but with other countries as well, and particularly in the developing world. And we are doing a lot of things. We are developing a lot of different programs in Haiti, as I mentioned, in Central America and in Africa to um, help develop a, a number of medicines of um, of generics, uh, medicaments in, in this area. And Brazil built on a bilateral program with Mozambique um, uh, a plan to produce uh, HIV uh, drugs to combat the problem in, F in not only in uh, Mozambique, but in other countries in, uh, in Africa. Uh, there is a huge uh, space uh, for cooperation between Brazil and the United States in this area. We do a lot of things in Brazil and abroad in third countries. And, and, and Brazil's got a very active aid program in Africa, as I understand. Yeah, and we do have in Brazil maybe the largest program in the world for HIV. A free distribution to all people Regardless of social or economic condition, everybody has the access. It's huge. It's uh, billions of dollars. And this, the, it was very successful. It helped controlling the, um, the epidemic, and uh, it's no longer a big problem in Brazil. Excellent. It's under control. What, what is Brazil doing to promote uh, Brazilian culture in the U.S.? And what are you doing uh, to promote the study of Portuguese in the U.S. and in co perhaps in cooperation with Portugal and with the, the Lusophone countries in Africa? Uh, we do have an organization of Lusophone countries, CPLP, which is Comunidade de Países de Língua Portuguesa. And uh, it's a very important one because uh, it establishes not only cultural cooperation, but all kinds of cooperation between the the seven Portuguese-speaking countries in the uh, planet, and it also helped uh, keeping, maintaining the Portuguese language as, uh, as a language of um, uh, East Timor. They were losing after the, uh, the, the Portuguese uh, left uh, Timor. And uh, it's not easy to have a very important uh, cultural uh, program uh, in the United States because this is a huge country and it demands a lot of money to uh, be visible and to uh, promote expositions, exhibitions and seminars or um, having a um, co uh, course of Portuguese in the different universities. We're trying a lot and the consulates, uh, all the ten general consulates in the United States have an important role to play in that. And we have um, uh, MOUs with different universities in which we have a lot of uh, interest. And uh, not only here, but in Washington, Georgetown and George Washington universities, they have important programs. And many other, many other parts in Chicago and so on. Uh, it will take uh, still maybe a long time. Uh, we have a large community of more or less one million Brazilians in the United States. And it will, will take, I think, maybe some, some more time to have a bigger presence and to have Portuguese as an important uh, foreign language. In some places, I've, I mentioned also during lunch that I went to Utah, and I was surprised to see that uh, there's a big, huge interest in most uh, students in the three universities I visited, they were very interested, they were studying or had studied Portuguese. That was a big surprise. Here's a question on Brazil and China. Brazil is doing well selling commodities to China, but less well selling manufactured goods, while the Chinese are selling cheap goods, manufactured goods in Brazil. 
Is Brazil losing its manufacturing base? I don't think so. We are selling a lot of manufacturers. As I said, we, have, uh, we are the third uh, largest uh, airline producers in the world, uh, the uh, jet, uh, line jets uh, in the world, the airplanes. Uh, we do have an investment, important investment in China. Uh, Embraer started an assembly line in China. And of course, we sell a lot of commodities to China, but uh, China is one of the models of the, of, uh, the economy today. And uh, we have to sell somewhere our commodities, and we sell a lot of iron ore, and uh, of course, uh, soybean, and so on. It's, uh, we have to place it somewhere too. But uh, it's not only a commodity uh, trade, bilateral trade. I don't have the exact numbers here, but there is an important proportion of manufactured goods too. But of course, the volume in terms of uh, money, uh, it's so big that, uh, as I mentioned here at the beginning, that in 1910, the United States became the first uh, trade partner of Brazil in the world. And this position uh, was held by the United States for one century, but was lost last year. Uh, Brazil trade with China is bigger now. And uh, of course, it also includes uh, manufactured goods, not only, not only commodities. For the Central Bank of Brazil, I, which I, I, know, answer, I yeah. know is your area of expertise. Uh, yeah. Can you comment on Brazil's currency policy? We've had in interest rate cuts lately. Can we expect more interest rate cuts? And how do you balance the concern for economic growth versus the concern about overheating the economy? Something very delicate. I'm really, I'm not in a position to answer because I'm not an economist. I'm not a member of Central Bank. And if I say that the government should uh, cut more, the, the uh, interest rates, that, uh, that would be dangerous. I could be criticized back home for interfering in the market. <laughs> if I say that the interest rates are very low, I will be accused of, being, of defending the bankers. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, it's a very difficult, uh, uh, very difficult answer. I can only say that the government is very much, uh, of course, concerned and wants to keep the domestic market working well and people going to, to, to the market and buying, and buying food, buying clothing, and buying home appliances, and so on. And of course, this is the main objective of the government when they deal, and the central bank, they deal with the uh, interest rate. That's great. Mr. Ambassador, I want to thank you very much. I want to thank you for coming here, coming to UCSD, <laughs> coming to the Institute of the Americas and being so generous with your time. Thank you all very much. Thank you very much for the invitation. Thank you.